I can't make it to Mom's funeral today because of work. You guys handle it, huh? I could hear the noise of a casino in the background of the call. I felt a burning rage as if my vision was turning red. My older brother, who was supposed to be the chief mourner, was lying and trying to skip out on our mother's funeral. He always dumped all the responsibilities on me, his younger sister. But to think he could do this, even for our own mother's funeral? I knew my anger had reached its peak. I won't forgive him, no matter what. I'll definitely show you hell. I swore to myself that I'd make him pay. Transfer all of Mom's inheritance. $30,000 to me. He demanded two months later. I calmly replied. All right, I'll renounce my claim. My name is Cassandra, 38 years old, living with my husband and two sons. We have a happy life, but there was one concern. Our ailing mother. Mom, I'm here. Entering her hospital room, Mom, with an IV drip, looked at me. Oh, Cassandra, thank you for coming. Mom used to be plump, but since falling ill, she had lost a lot of weight. How are you feeling? Mom gave a troubled smile to my question. I had already heard from the doctor that she only had a few months left. Cassandra, I have something important to tell you. What's up? Why so serious? Mom began to speak in a soft voice, saying she didn't have much time left. After listening to everything she had to say, I reassured her. Don't worry about what comes next, Mom. It'll be okay. I'm sorry, Cassandra. With Jeffrey being the way he is, everything falls on you. I've never felt burdened by you, Mom. And as for my older brother, we'll figure something out. <sighs> Mom sighed. Then, as if remembering something she said, Oh, do you remember my friend Lysia? Aunt Lysia, yes, what about her? I've left something with her. It's something passed down from your grandma. When I'm gone, I want you to have it. I understand, but please, don't talk like that. I choked up, and Mom comforted me, stroking my head like she used to. After leaving the room, I called my older brother. He answered the phone with a grumpy tone. What do you want, Cassandra? Mom's not doing well. Please visit her. I'm busy with work. He runs his own business and should have a flexible schedule, yet he rarely visited Mom. I have a job, too, and it would help if you could contribute to the hospital bills. He snapped at me. Don't rely on others. Don't count on my money. We're siblings. We should be there for each other. Listen, don't come to me for help. Handle it yourself. My older brother hung up the phone after saying that. He's always been like this. Self-centered, stingy with money, and always pushing his problems onto me, even as adults. When we were kids, he stole money from my piggy bank. When I complained, he yelled at me aggressively. When our dad passed away a few years ago, he didn't lift a finger to help. I was running around, busy with arrangements, and he seemed oblivious to the efforts of both me and our mom. Worse still, he didn't contribute a dime to the funeral expenses. Mom always felt guilty how he turned out, but I believed it was just his inherent nature. Despite how he was, both dad and especially mom showered me with genuine love. Even when he tormented me, Mom always defended me. I wished she could have a peaceful retirement. <sighs> I sighed as I returned home, where my husband and sons greeted me warmly. They were concerned about Mom, too, and their support eased my pain a bit. Three months later, Mom passed away. Our family was there for her final moments. She left us peacefully as if she was just sleeping. Mom always prioritized us kids, even during tough times. She consistently showered us with unwavering love. 
losing her felt like a gaping hole in my heart. But my husband and kids were there grieving with me. While holding me, my husband said, Cassandra, we need to contact your brother. He's the eldest, so he'll be the chief mourner, right? Yes, I've been trying to call him. I had messaged my older brother about Mom's passing, but even though he read it, he didn't answer. It's okay. We'll handle the funeral arrangements. My husband reassured. Thank you for helping. Since we couldn't reach my brother, my husband and I proceeded with the viewing and funeral preparations. Despite multiple attempts, my brother remained unreachable. Time, however, waits for no one. As the viewing was underway, and the stream of visitors began to wane, my brother's family finally showed up. Sorry, we're late. I was about to scold him when I noticed my nephew wearing a theme park hat. You've got to be kidding. I was speechless when I saw my nephew, who was behind my older brother. He was wearing a theme park headgear on his head. No way. We had planned to go to the theme park for a while. Can't let the kids down, right? I had informed him just the day before. Despite knowing about Mom's passing, they had been at a theme park. I can't believe this. You're the chief mourner. Chill out. We've done all the preparations, but at least act the part at tomorrow's funeral. Yeah, yeah. Got it. Let's go, everyone. My husband was in shock and all I could do was hold my head in disbelief. Regardless, the funeral was the next day. With grief of losing mom still fresh and barely any sleep, I faced the new day. My husband and I were busy with the funeral preparations, but as the appointed time approached, my brother was nowhere to be seen. Thinking he might still be asleep, I called him. After a while, he answered. Hello? Where are you? Mom's funeral is about to start. About that. I could hear noise in the background. I can't make it to Mom's funeral today. Gotta work. You guys handle it. I realized the noise was from a casino just as he hung up. You've got to be kidding me. After that, no matter how many times I tried, I couldn't get through to my older brother, nor his wife. Despite being the chief mourner, he was trying to skip out on Mom's funeral with a lie. And to think he was at a casino? He always dumped all the troubles and matters on me, his younger sister. But to think he could do this, even for our own mother's funeral? My anger reached its boiling point. I will not forgive this man no matter what. I'll definitely show you hell. I swore to myself that I would never forgive him no matter what. In the end, the funeral proceeded without my older brother's family and I took on the role of the chief mourner. The suspicious look from the attendees hurt, but it had to be done. As I was tidying up after the funeral, an old friend of Mom's, Aunt Lysia, approached me. Cassandra, dear, it must have been tough. I turned to her. Thank you for coming today for Mom. Aunt Lysia wiped away a tear. Your mom always spoke of you as her pride and joy. We reminisced about Mom for a while. They had been close friends since their school days. I felt grateful that Mom had such a friend. As we were talking, Aunt Lysia mentioned something. Did many tell you? I have something she entrusted to me. Ah, Mom did mention something. I'll come by another day to pick it up. Sorry for the inconvenience. It's okay. Just make sure you come when you're ready. I parted ways with Aunt Lysia after that conversation. That's how the day of Mom's funeral ended. Two months later, while I was home alone, the doorbell rang. Older brother! Open up. We need to talk. I hadn't seen him since the funeral. We had managed the memorial service without him. As I opened the door, he barged in and sat heavily on the sofa. What do you want after what you did at the funeral? Just look at this. He thrust a bank book with Mom's name on it towards me. Where did you get this? Found it at the family home. Look. He opened the bank book to reveal a balance of about $30,000. What about it? 
This is mom's inheritance. Listen, I'm taking the 30K. He said it as if it was his right. I replied calmly. You're saying you want all of mom's inheritance? That's right. The account is frozen, so you handle the paperwork and transfer it to me. Also, I'll be taking the family home and land in my name. Can I ask one thing? What? I pointed to an old doll in a glass case in the corner of the living room. Mom wanted me to have that. It's a keepsake. I'll be taking it, okay? Oh, that old thing? Fine, take it. It's just junk anyway. Understood. You'll sign the renunciation, right? He approached me with a threatening look, and I calmly replied, Yes, I'll sign the renunciation. For a moment, he looked taken aback, probably expecting resistance. He probably thought I would resist. But his expression quickly turned smug. If you were always this understanding, things would be easier. Make sure you don't come back later asking for the inheritance. Sign here. My older brother came over with a self-made signed promise. When I silently stamped it, he leapt in high spirits, unaware of my sly grin behind his back. A month later, while my husband and I were at home, there was a furious ringing at the door. It was my older brother. What's going on, bro? What do you mean what's going on? What is this? Spread out on the table were numerous overdue bills. I had no idea mom had debt, and it's for one billion dollars. My older brother exclaimed, almost screaming, while I smirked. Oh dear, that's quite a situation. I can't believe this. Yes, our mother had a significant debt. Originally, our father ran a business, but had to shut it down due to massive debts. Soon after, he passed away, and our guilt-ridden mother inherited everything. She managed to pay off some by selling our ancestral land, but she fell ill before she could settle everything. I had learned about this from my mother on her deathbed. My brother, always having fun, even when times were tough and never visiting our sick mother, had no clue. That's why you should renounce your inheritance. I'm sorry, there's nothing left for you. I remember my mother's words from her sick bed. You knew about this, didn't you? That's why you renounced so easily. My brother confronted me. So what if I did? You were the one blinded by a bit of cash, not checking things properly before accepting the inheritance. He glared at me as I spoke calmly. So I just need to renounce it too, right? Then I won't have to pay the debt. That won't work. Interrupted by my husband, a judicial scrivener. You can only renounce within three months of the inheritance starting, which means three months from when my mother passed. That time has already passed. Cassandra hit did her paperwork correctly. What? I continued. Also, if you use the inherited money, like transferring it to your account or spending it, you've effectively accepted the inheritance. That means you inherit not just the cash, but also the debt. You've done both, haven't you? Damn! If only you had told me earlier. If you had done your research, you could have avoided this. Isn't that your responsibility? His face turned from anger to pale disbelief. So I can't escape this debt? That's right. Hearing this, he slumped onto the sofa defeated. Is that all? Why don't you leave? I said coldly. He looked up, his expression now pleading. Cassandra, I can't pay this off alone. We're the only siblings, right? Help me out. I exploded in anger. You always told me not to rely on others. But now you want help when it suits you? I will never help someone like you. He looked shocked, probably because I, who always kept quiet, was now furious. He was probably surprised that Sis, who had not talked back to him until now, was so furious. You were always about yourself, even when the family was struggling, even when Mom was sick. You even skipped her funeral to go to a casino. Who would help someone like you? We're done. Me breathing on his shoulder and my older brother looking dumbfounded. My husband calmly added, Please leave and never contact us again. He left, shoulders slumped. Catching my breath, I glanced at the doll in the corner of the living room, a keepsake from my mom. It had been a while since the funeral when Aunt Lysia, a friend of mom's, gave me this doll. I remembered that moment. Cassandra, this is something your mom left with me. Oh, I remember this being at our place. It brings back memories. It's so beautiful, even though it's old. 
as I nostalgically picked up the case containing the doll. Aunt Lysia spoke. You see, Cassandra, the reason many left it with me is because my son is an antique dealer. He can also appraise antiques. What? That doll you inherited from your grandmother. It's actually called a bisque doll. It's worth several million dollars as a piece of art. I looked at Aunt Lysia in shock. Many passed away before the appraisal was done, but she might have had a hunch. While she was in the hospital, she asked me to keep it and make sure it got to you, Cassandra. Mom, holding the doll's case, I broke down in tears in front of Aunt Alicia. <laughs> Cherish it, just like your mom cherished you. I could only nod in response to Aunt Alicia's words. Now, that doll in my living room was witnessing my break with my older brother. Thank you, Mom. I promise to be happy. As I whispered to the doll, my returning husband gently rubbed my back. Six months have passed since then. My older brother ended up with a debt of one billion dollars and had to declare bankruptcy. He quickly sold our family home and land. But it didn't fetch much. His thriving business collapsed, and his wife left him with their children. Now... He lives alone, in an old apartment, unable to indulge in his beloved gambling, working non-stop. I've cut ties with my older brother completely. He tried to contact me persistently for a while, but eventually stopped. Now, I live in peace. The doll I inherited from Mom was appraised elsewhere and valued at $50,000. However, I have no intention of selling it. I hope it continues to watch over us as I pour the same love into my children that mom gave to me.